go somewhere I can't fly. Hi, I'm Christine Mao. Christine served in the United States Air Force for 20 years. She was the first woman to fly the F-35. Christine's now an F-35 flight instructor at Lockheed Martin. Today, I'll be breaking down clips from movies and TV about fighter pilots. Flares behind enemy lines. What is it? Oh, we're being painted. We're being painted means that there is a SAM site on the ground that is seeing you on their radar. SAM is a surface to air missile. Single missile tracking on it. What they're depicting here is kind of a mix between a radar guided missile and an infrared guided missile. We need a bigger heat decoy. In the fighter community, we don't say heat decoys, we say flares. Try to break the lock. Infrared guided missiles are typically short range missiles and they cannot fly out this long. A missile will typically burn in this booster phase. <laughs> And once that booster phase is burnt out, then that's it. If you have a rapidly reacting target, that missile won't be able to continue to turn left, turn right, turn left, go up, go down. There's just no possible way that this missile could continue to fly the way that it does. What is it? Most aircraft have a master caution light, and that's just letting you know there's something wrong with your aircraft. I don't know of any aircraft that would give you a master caution light if you were being spiked by an enemy radar. So that doesn't make sense for this scene at all. Yeah! Right. This airplane climbs straight up, which is the opposite thing from what you want to do. Oh, absolutely. If you've got an infrared guided missile tracking on you, the number one thing you need to do is to maneuver your aircraft and put out flares. They hardly put out any flares at all. Put out decoy flares, copy. Hang on. Now, climbing up high is giving this infrared guided missile a nice blue uncluttered background for it to be able to track on you since it's a heat seeking missile. What they should have done is stay down low and continue to fly within these canyons because they're hiding closer to the ground. So there's an, a lot of infrared clutter. So the missile never locks on them to begin with and is never launched. Aren't you gonna miss all this excitement? Outrunning an F-22, Iron Man. Get it. Oh, he just looks super sunny. Tony Stark in his Iron Man suit outruns these F-22s, initially at least, by his acceleration to supersonic. The F-22 is one of the fastest fighters that we have out there. Supersonic is just going faster than the speed of sound. Back in the day when we first broke the sound barrier, it was a bit of a violent event. Today, you'll end up going supersonic multiple times during your flight and not even notice it. No way, that's a UAV. What is it? I can't see anything. Whatever it was, it just bought the farm. I think bogey has been handled, sir. Typically, if you're uh, engaging another aircraft, in order to say that it has been handled, you would want to verify that it has splashed, i.e. has exploded, and that it is no longer flying. They're talking about a superhero in a suit. I think all things are acceptable in this case. Funny how that works, huh? Disobeying orders, red tails. Everybody form up. Going home. Yeah, I see something. It's a train. 11 o'clock. It looks like they're moving livestock to me. You're always going to wear your mask. Your mask is not only giving you oxygen to be able to breathe, but also your microphone is located in your mask. So if you have your mask drop and you're just talking, no one can hear you because there's too much ambient noise in the cockpit that no one can hear you over the radio. And it happens in almost every fighter pilot movie where they're dropping their mask to talk to each other to say something, but it's not realistic at all. Let's go get it. Where's lightning? Where the hell are you, lightning? Taking a train from the front like you should have done. It's my decision, lightning. Stay in formation. In most cases, following your flight lead is the right answer because they are typically more experienced than you and better than you in the airplane. Stay in front of it! In this situation, the flight lead made a very poor tactical decision. His wingman decided not to follow his direction. Easy, easy, we gotta take your head off. He ended up killing the train, so he's gonna be praised, but likely he will be debriefed for not following instructions. Just trying to keep you boys inspired. Glare Dunkirk. I don't hear we're sitting ducks. Even feel they'll come out of the sun. 
in our helmets, there's a visor that you put down in front of your eyes that's tinted, which will help combat glare. I'm on the bomb up. Of course, that doesn't get rid of the glare that shines off of the canopy or different things in the cockpit that makes it difficult to see. You guys know if it's bright out, you wear your sunglasses and you're able to see a little bit better. Found it, Lumber Club. They are trying to cross the channel looking for enemy fighters. If I was the enemy fighter, I would definitely be flying high and try to keep the sun behind me so that I prevent anybody from seeing me. Yeah, he's down for the count. You can also do this in the middle of a fight. You can pull up into the sun, which will hopefully cause a momentary blindness and give you advantage, albeit momentarily, because you can't stay in front of the sun forever. Plain Chicken, Pearl Harbor. Okay, we're going left, right? Right, uh, right, right? Right like we're going right or right like we're going left? Oh, well, now you got me all mixed up. I don't know, make up your mind. Uh the biggest training rule that they're violating is the bubble, which is how close you're allowed to get to another airplane. In the Air Force, in training at least, the closest that you can be to another airplane while fighting them is a thousand feet. Once you're done with training, that will typically be shrunk down to 500 feet. Those are some smooth aces. You could definitely get kicked out for a stunt like this. Not only are they putting themselves in danger, but they're also risking a total loss of two very expensive P-40 aircraft. Stuff like this doesn't fly. Those farm boys are grounded. Pilot language, the Incredibles. India Golf 9 or 9 are transmitting in the blind guard disengage. There is a frequency called guard frequency that aircraft can use to transmit emergencies. Transmitting in the blind guard. Transmitting in the blind on guard was a very accurate statement for her to make. India Golf 9 or 9 are So that is her call sign. In civil aviation, your call sign is your tail number. So November indicates that it's a civil aircraft. In the military, we typically fly around with call signs that are assigned to each squadron. So you would hear Kong, for example, Kong 1-1, and those are associated with military aircraft. Mayday, Mayday, India Gulf 9 or 9 is buddy spiked, abort, abort, there are children aboard. When you say buddy spiked, you are getting radar warning indications from a friendly aircraft. You would say buddy spiked to let them know that they have locked you up for a couple reasons. The most common being, hey man, don't shoot me because I'm a good guy too. There's a few things with her airplane that makes it a bit unusual. She does have some sort of a radar warning receiver and or an IR warning receiver, letting her know that somebody has shot at her. She's able to maneuver this airplane like no commercial jet that I've ever seen. Disengage. She does have afterburners on these engines and it gives you quite a bit of extra thrust, which is not something you would see in a civilian jet. She's doing a fantastic job at being very descriptive with what she's doing with her aircraft and where she is. I gotta give her mad props for that. Say no more. Teamwork Top Gun. We got a thousand knots closer, Matt. It's coming right at us. Okay, buddy, what's on your mind? I love the movie Top Gun. It came out, I think I was in fourth grade, fifth grade maybe. It inspired me to want to become a fighter pilot, albeit in the Air Force and not the Navy, but it is just a classic. Airspeed 300, go get him, ma'am. I'm going for missile lock. The term missile lock may be a bit of a misnomer in this case. Great. Typically, a fighter pilot will lock up an enemy aircraft with their radar. That aircraft would have a radar warning receiver that would let them know that they are being locked up. That's step one. Come on, lock up, baby. Lock up, baby. Lock up. I got him locked. Bingo. They already probably had a radar lock in real life this for real life. Okay, buddy. So not much would change. The bandit aircraft would feel a little bit more threatened and hopefully leave, which he does bug out. Your tail is clear, big one's bugged out. We employ as two ships and four ships in order to provide mutual support and the core element is a two ship. You provide mutual support to each other so that if you do intercept a bandit, that both of you are together controlling the bandit, checking your six for any other bandits, and ensuring you get the mission done. Very common. Greetings. 
know that is not typical to roll in birded above an F5 and communicate via giving them the bird, but it does make for a funny story and a great movie poster. Spam. Maneuvering, return to base. So typically we fly low levels around 500 feet and roughly about 500 knots. You can certainly fly lower than that, but if you're talking 500 knots at 200 feet, your margin for error is very, very small. In fact, your time to die is so low that any one little mistake and you're gonna impact the ground. Time to die is a concept where if you are flying level flight at low altitude, your time to die is the time it takes for you to impact the ground. If you're in a slight descent and you're 50 feet off the ground going supersonic, your time to die is about a half a second. But to fly underneath the bridge, to try to gun somebody low altitude, to be going almost supersonic at 50 feet off the ground, that is very unrealistic. part where they show a strike eagle getting gunned, they don't like that. They used to fly strike eagles and so that made me a little sad. A turn radius of a fighter aircraft, we'll call it, is about a half a mile. They're low altitude, so their turn radius will be a little bit smaller because the air is thicker. However, these guys are turning around skyscrapers very tightly. In between other skyscrapers. Which would to me indicate a turn radius of, I would call it 500 feet or less, which is not something that's accurate at all. So kind of silly, but very exciting. Signals, sky fighters. In this clip, Two French Mirages are chasing a pilot who stole a Mirage. There are international signals that you can use when you're intercepting another aircraft. The intercepting fighter should pull up to the left wing of the intercepted fighter and rock their wings to let that intercepted fighter know that he is being intercepted. And then what you would do is fly slightly in front of and turn your nose across that aircraft to lead them to where you want them to go. Obviously, the black mirage in this case was non-cooperative. When the president travels, we are airborne in a combat air patrol looking for anybody who might be up to no good. So we train in how to intercept usually very slow moving aircraft that don't know where they are. <laughs> The control zone is an area behind your airplane. You can kind of think of it like a banner that you're towing behind you at all times. Closest to your airplane is defined as a reaction limit. So you don't want to be too close to a fighter that you cannot react in time to maintain the offensive or to avoid hitting that airplane. The two mirages that intercept the black mirage, those guys are flying awfully close uh, to this other mirage that they have no idea what this person's intentions are. So I would not have flown as close as they were depicting there. Dogfight, sky crawlers. You see this maneuver a lot. Hit the brakes, so fly right by. In flight school, we learned the term go up, blow up, because it's not that effective. So if you've got the airspeed to go vertical and you are a defensive fighter, then you certainly could. But when you do so, you are opening up your turn circle because God's G is pulling you down and you're going straight up. So you're very predictable and you open up your turn circle. So it's potentially a lot easier for the offender to just continue to pull a little bit harder and gun you in the process and so you end up dying. So I would say it is not very common in real life. For an anime film, they accurately depicted the dynamic environment of finding another airplane, but I don't necessarily think that the moves that they used were the most accurate. Coffin Corner, Green Lantern. God damn it, Tom, what the hell 
you feed those things. And 35s, what else? <laughs> the times that I have shot missiles in training, I shot them against drones. <laughs> Given the nature of warfare and where we're headed, I think that it's pretty accurate that we'll be fighting against drones a whole lot more. Let's go somewhere I can't fly. What the hell is he up to? Coffin corner. They are referencing what I imagine the ceiling of the aircraft. Um, no. Where the drones can no longer operate because of whatever limitation that they have. The coffin corner, as they reference it in this movie, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> we do use the term aircraft ceiling. And the ceiling of an aircraft, which is also the maximum altitude that it can be flown at, could be driven by physiological restrictions, or it could be driven by engine restrictions. I bought rules of engagement set ceiling at 50,000 feet. ROE or rules of engagement are simply just the rules that you have to abide by as you're out there fighting. Compressor stall, compressor stall. Now his engine, it said compressor stall, which by the way is not what the F-35 will tell you, but that's okay. So the engine said compressor stall, and yet it still continued to burn. It sort of looked like it coughed a little bit, but then as he went downhill, it clearly recovered itself. Yes! Fuel calculation, Dunkirk. Jack fuel, port is one and two. Some gallons. 68 gallons, Fortis leader. They are referencing gallons in this clip, which is how all of these fighters measured their fuel back in the day. Modern fighters today don't measure their fuel in gallons. They measure them in thousands of pounds. And you have to check your fuel regularly. Fortis 2, what's your fuel? You want to make sure it's feeding accurately. Can you turn back? No, no. I'm fairly confident it's just a gauge. That there's no trapped gas and Make sure that you're checking it so that you don't overfly your bingo fuel. Bingo fuel means you have to stop what you're doing and head home now or else you won't have enough gas to make it. Understood. Conclusion. I enjoyed watching all of the clips. They were very entertaining and humorous in how inaccurate they are in a lot of ways. But as far as talking about fighter pilot stuff, I could do that all day long. If you're interested in becoming a fighter pilot, I would absolutely encourage you to do that. It is an outstanding career, very rewarding, very challenging, very fun.